God has tried to get through to us um, literally millions and millions and millions of times. Matter of fact, everybody has access to God. All they have to do is to, um, I mean, we call it prayer, we call it meditation, we call it contemplation, but if you, if you really sincerely seek God, God is not that hard to find. Um, and uh, we have been a big disappointment to God because we um, have just consistently refused to listen to God. As a pastor, you know, people say, why does God allow this? Why does God allow this child to die? Why does God allow the war in the Holy Land to, you know, continue between the Israelis and the Palestinians? Why does God allow people to suffer, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? And that question is um, predicated on a false assumption. Um, God doesn't want any of these things to happen. Um, it's all against God's will. It's our perverse nature, our sinful nature that allows these things to happen, causes these things to happen. If we were following God's will, they wouldn't be happening. Um, so God, we, t we tend to ascribe to God all the bad things that happen and take responsibility for the good things to happen when in reality it's just the opposite. Um, God wants us to live in harmony with one another and in harmony with the creation. And the conflict and the suffering that we're experiencing in this world is of a human origin, um, not originated by God. When Jesus came into the world, it was um, a great opportunity for the whole world to find a new way of living and interacting with one another. And um, we all have failed, and I would lay the greatest responsibility upon Christianity itself because Christianity were the ones that were supposedly the ones that were heirs to the revelation of God, and Christians have failed, um, and they were the ones that you know, we're given the clear transmission of what God's desire was. God is unhappy with humankind, unhappy with the way the world is going, unhappy with the way um, God's beautiful creation is being treated. And um, God is intervening in a very direct way in the world today. And tr God and the angels are about trying to promote a spiritual awakening. In American history we have these things called the Great Awakening. Well, we are living in the Great Awakening. Um, and it was made clear to me that um, this is it. Wake up or um, the slate will be wiped clean. Now, I'm not talking about the annihilation of the earth. I'm, I'm talking about, um, you know, from a population of whatever, two, 260 million people, the United States could go down to a population of a few tens of thousands. Um, we, the United States, who have been given the great blessing more than any other nation, more than any other peoples in the history of the world, we have been given the blessing. We have the power and the material wealth to be agents, in, in church terms they're called missionaries, but agents of transformation um, to this world. And we have not fulfilled God's expectation of what we're supposed to be doing, which is bringing about um, not just material prosperity and security and well-being to the rest of the world, but more importantly, um, moral uh, understanding, spiritual wisdom to the rest of the world. And in truth, if one has traveled around the world and you speak to foreigners about what the United States represents, what we represent to the rest of the world is violence, 
uh, conquest, domination, exploitation, um, evil, uh, pornography. And by pornography, I'm speaking more about the pornography of violence and abuse than just sexual pornography. And um, the United States has been given this role because we've been given this blessing. And we need to work on our awakening, which, going back to religious terms, is conversion. Um, and we need to be doing it now. In the near future, it's going to be too late, and some other people will be chosen. We will lose the blessing. One of the follies that we live in is we think we deserve to be the richest, most powerful nation in the world. That's wrong. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve it at all. It's a gift from God, and God can take the gift away as God has given the gift. Um, and it will be catastrophic um, in this country will um, simply um, be the lowest nation in the world instead of the highest, the poorest nation in the world instead of the richest, the weakest nation in the world instead of the strongest, and some other nation will be called to show the world the way of Jesus Christ. Um, I don't know how it's going to play out because I was shown um, possibilities and I don't know if those possibilities are the way things may be or the way things will be. I don't know. I, I'm not clear on that. Um, our future could be so beautiful and the future that they showed me, which isn't very far off within a couple hundred years, which in fact I told them was impossibly um, soon. It couldn't happen in a couple hundred years. They assured me that with the intervention of God and the angels it could happen. Um, I don't know what's going to come about. I have uh, children and I have grandchildren. I want them to have the uh, preferred future, not the horrible possible future that they also showed me. And um, it's all about a heart change. Um, we need to um, use our wealth. We need to be using our power to bring God's love and God's goodness and God's blessings to the whole rest of the world. And my experience happened in 1985. I've seen signs of good happening, and I've seen signs of bad happening, and I, don't, and I, I just don't know which way we're going. And I'm doing everything that I can with my life to be on God's side. They also told me that there is no sitting on the fence. You are either working for God's good, or you're opposed to God's good. To be indifferent to God's good is to be opposed to it. There, there's no middle ground. It, in this, if you will, um, battle between good and evil, there's nothing in between. You know, I would say that most people say, well, you know, I mean, I'm good, I'm not doing any harm. That's not good. That's evil. <laughs> you have to be out there loving God, loving your neighbor, and, and living that um, if you're really you know, part of God's plan for this world. Um, this, this is the day, this is the moment to decide which way you're going to go. And all those uh, seemingly hysterical fundamentalist evangelical preachers that are out there screaming and yelling are right on target. <laughs> you know, their message may be a little harsh and their means may be a little too confrontational, but they're, they're right. You know, um, we need to um, convince people that they have to make a decision 
or that they're going to be on God's side or they're going to be opposed to God.